this success regime was set up in three areas of the country, one in Essex, one in Devon and here, with the stated intention of reviewing and revising the healthcare in those areas. The things they're doing are basically to cut services in one of the major acute hospitals and reduce the numbers of community hospital beds and the way they're going to do that is by closing three of the community hospitals one of which is ours. There's absolutely disgusting proposed cuts to not only maternity services and acute children's services, but also the local cottage hospitals that are an essential lifeline for people in the rural areas and also stroke services as well in West Cumbria. The local Carlisle Hospital is already understaffed, underfunded and overwhelmed by patients and if the more rural hospitals are closed or if their services are run down, it's going to overwhelm that service further. This is Emily and she's got something to say to you. Save Grandad's Hospital! 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 Campaigns across Cumbria have united to just overall reject the plans that were put forward and I've not seen that before. It's always been east-west or um, different communities divided and I felt this has been really different for that reason really. I think people have really come together in a different way. They're really united and at this rally today. People have come from Maryport, from Whitehaven, from Workington, from all over Cumbria to Carlisle, which isn't a short distance, which is part of the reason everyone's campaigning about these health cuts. The main settlement, Falston Moor, is 20 miles from Penrith over a pass at 1900 foot that is blocked with snow every winter, just over 20 miles to Brampton, Slow Road and 30 miles to Carlisle. There's nothing else in between in terms of any health care at all. There's no public transport worth speaking of. It's like an hour's drive to Carlisle, 40 minutes to Penrith, 40 minutes to Brampton. How are people going to manage to visit their friends and family in these hospitals, especially when at end of life a lot of people can only cope with a 10 minute visit. There's a huge number of days in the year where they're snowed in, where they can't actually use their roads to get to the Cumberland Infirmary and if their cottage hospital closes, it's just going to mean people are going to die or people are going to be stuck in snowdrifts on the side of the road. They're trying to close the cottage hospital. There's 13 beds and they're trying to close it down altogether. And we've done trips to Cockermouth and it took four and a half hours on the bus. People who haven't got cars can't do it. There's people referred from West Cumberland after a big operation. There's people referred with cancer and things like that. And they go there because it's really good. If they close the hospital beds, that means we lose the nurse-led treatment unit at our hospital. We are liable to lose the GP surgery, which firstly rents its premises from the hospital, secondly has a whole integrated team with the hospital and the only way that there's actually enough funding for a GP surgery in such a small community, where only just over 2,000 people, is because there is the additional work in the community hospital. We have an excellent alternative plan. The beds will be flexible between care homes, sheltered accommodation, etc and hospital beds and that they can be what they need to be at any given time. The success regime declared that we should have no medical beds and the clinical commissioning group has said yes that's the option we're going with, no medical beds and now the health scrutiny committee has bizarrely having said uh-uh we're going to refer it then change their minds. If they're not going to let us have medical beds it doesn't exist, our plan. We've just lifted our picket lines uh, outside Carlisle Station uh, this afternoon so we could join the protest. We know how bad transport links are in this county and how essential it is to defend all NHS facilities across the whole county. The services at West Cumberland Hospital are in a dire state. We have no emergency surgery. Anyone in need of it, from a burst appendix to a car accident, faces a journey of up to an hour and a half on poorly maintained single carriageway roads, and that's without getting stuck behind one of the slow moving vehicles that frequently use them. We have severely limited paediatric services. Seriously ill children also face the same journey, and West Cumberland can't even offer a poorly child a bed for the night. I think of all the good service which John Platt and others have provided for those children over the last 50 years in the first new-build hospital in the NHS. 
and I think of the cerebral palsy or death of babies and fetuses as a result of being shuttled to Carlisle. An apartheid health service treating one group of people as subhuman and expendable. Our consultant-led maternity services are under threat. The 12-month trial period that they've been given is nothing more than a stay of execution. Any birth can turn from routine to emergency in a flash and we should never accept the suffering of an hour in the back of an ambulance for our sisters, our mothers and our daughters. I just want to share really the story of how I gave birth um, last year in August to Benjamin. Um, I was a high-risk pregnancy from the start uh, because I'm a type 1 diabetic so I had to be under consultant-led care. I was in labour quite a long time to be fair um, but everything was normal until suddenly during the night the midwife checked the CTG and said oh there's something mm, a bit strange so she came back with the consultant the consultant says we better take a blood sample. Five minutes later the consultant came back and said to me right we'll have to get this baby out. So they put me to sleep, baby came out, baby was fine. We needed this consultant to make the decision in a split second, right, we have to get him out. And I do think without the consultant, he wouldn't be here now. Come gather around people wherever you roll. And admit that the waters around you have grown. And accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving We better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times they are changing Whitehaven's acute stroke unit has been moved to Carlisle with zero input from the public and at meeting after meeting, our concerns are sidestepped and we are lied to. Stephen Eames, head of the North Cumbria NHS Trust, I address this to you. You tell us to trust you, then give us a reason to. There is power in the people, there is power in the land, there is power in the hands of us patients. But it all amounts to nothing if together we don't stand. There is power in our union. Now the lessons of the past were all learned from workers' blood. The greed of the buses we must pay for. From the cities to the villages, from trenches full of mud. It's our NHS and so shall stay, sir. The way the consultation started was very much divide and conquer. So it was a bit of a set of choices of which hospital do you want to be closed, which service do you want to be cut. And people just haven't fallen for that at all. People have joined together and united and said, actually, we reject all of these proposals. As things have escalated and it's become blatantly obvious um, really what the plans are for the NHS, which is privatisation, run it down, privatise it. I think groups have come together. It's very hard to make a unified campaign across such an enormous area, but yes, we have, I and mean, we've certainly all been supportive of each other. Everybody uh, realised that in order to have any impact, we needed a huge, huge presence, and so different parties, uh, certainly the uh, Socialist Party, Labour Party, the Greens, have all come together along with various unions. We've got lawyers, for example, who are looking into the legal um, challenges for the case. We've got doctors and nurses who are actually giving us the technical information about what impact the cuts will have. Um, we've got campaigners and activists, we've got social media specialists, we've got journalists um, all working together. We now understand exactly how any one bit going affects all the rest. I don't think they realise we've clocked this, that this is actually all about the money. We had a hospital built and we started paying for it in 2002. In 2016, taxpayers had paid £263 million over a period of 15 years for a hospital that cost £67 million to build. We still have another 20 years to pay to finish off the contract. When that contract, when that contract is finished, 
We still don't own the hospital. And we have to go crawling back to negotiate another contract. If inflation runs at 25 to 3%, we end up paying £1,000. And £18 million. Pound. Interserve, the organisation which built and runs the hospital, in 2012 decided to sell its share of the hospital for £90 million. Pound. To Dalmore Trust, an offshore investment fund. Last year, the annual fee was £25 million, pound, and they didn't pay any bloody tax on it. There isn't a firewall in the hall of the hospital. It's illegal. That building is illegal because it's a public building and the public shouldn't be allowed in. And guess how much it's going to cost to rectify? £14 million. Pound. And have the private sector paid a penny so far? Not a bloody penny. Nationally, hospitals are crushed by debt of almost 2.5 billion pounds, as 3.8 million people sit on waiting lists forgotten by the government that claims to serve them. Germany and uh, uh, France spend 11% of their national income on the health service. Britain only spends 8% and the Tories are pushing it down to 6%. If the government stopped turning a blind eye to the tax evasion and avoidance by big business and the millionaires, it amounts to £123 billion a year now, then that's, twice as, that's bigger than the NHS budget. They're complaining about the nasty foreigners. They only use 0.3% of the NHS budget, but 10% of the budget is being bled from us by the private pharmaceutical giants, you know. One of them uh, increased the price of their drug over a few years by 12,000%. And another one increased the price of, a, of an old uh, product, but vital, by 2,600% overnight. This government is hell-bent on cutting services to the point where the services collapse, then using that collapse to justify full privatisation of our NHS through health insurance schemes. They knew that they couldn't just say to people, oh, let's privatise the NHS, because there'd be public uproar. So instead, they put in a 20 to 25 year plan in order to do that. And they've been gradually working through this, successive governments. We're now at step nine out of ten of selling off our NHS. The step nine is when they tell us it's failing. Every day we see on the BBC how it's not coping. Because I'm no longer employed by the NHS, I can actually get up here and speak. But healthcare staff in our trust cannot. They're being gagged. Take the case of Bernadette in West Cumberland Hospital, who dared to speak up on behalf of her patients as a midwife. She's now under disciplinary procedures. When are we going to decide that we're going to go to trust board meetings? Two or three hundred of us. And we're going to wreck them. Yeah. When are we going to decide that the politicians who supposedly represent us who have remained silent over the last 15 years about PFI, when are we going to decide to knock on their front doors? Yeah. This is our NHS. I'm not willing to get, let it go down without a fight. I hope you're going to come and join me and all of these people here in this fight and mobilise the whole of Carlisle, the whole of North and West and East Cumbria to start fighting for our NHS. Because if we don't, it's gone. And we will have an American healthcare system where those people who can afford to pay will be able to get health insurance and those that won't will get a second-rate health service. And I certainly didn't dream to be a doctor to let that happen. In solidarity with you all, thank you. Do not be a silent witness and stand by without a single word as our beloved NHS is completely destroyed. We need all your voices to be heard. Do not be a silent witness as they kill off our NHS, our much-loved national treasure that was the envy of the world for its success. Do not be a silent witness as you lose your vital health care facility from acute and emergency medicine to cottage hospitals, paediatrics and maternity. 
Do not be a silent witness when our front line are ridiculed, overworked and underpaid in challenging times, their dedication grossly undervalued. Do not be a silent witness as they create chaos and fragmentation with radical reforms that have cost us billions along with the political ideology of privatisation. Do not be a silent witness as they disregard our public health and endanger every one of our precious lives in favour of profit and private wealth. Do not, Do not be a silent witness. witness. Voice your opinions and continue the fight. It is our NHS and the Constitution says patience must come first. It is our human right. Do not, Do not be a silent witness and stand by without a single word as our beloved NHS is completely destroyed. We need all your voices to be heard.